Hello, Zach Yelton here, Coastal Shores Landscape. Uh, thanks for tuning in to our July 2020 newsletter video. Hope you all are doing well and uh, looking forward to a good 4th of July weekend as we celebrate the independence of our country. Uh, we have had a great uh, summer here so far. Our landscapes, we see them uh, getting into full swing now that uh, soil and air temperatures are up where they need to be. Um, our first wave of, of fertilizer has uh, really taken most of our lawns to a really great place. Uh, and uh, I want to mention to you that later in, uh, let's see, later this month and the first part of August, we will be putting out our second application of fertilizer. Uh, this is a granular form and it is a slow release product that will release itself over about 90 days. Uh, that will extend the, the growth of your grass and, and uh, release nutrients into your soil all the way through the end of the summer, in, into, the, uh, into the fall season. So uh, you can expect to see that go down on your property here around the first week of August. Uh, still about a month away, but wanted to uh, mention that to you today. Uh, one thing we also look very closely at this time of year is irrigation. Uh, as, the, as the heat rises, um, sun is overhead, full days, long days out there, uh, it, it is demanding a lot out of your landscape. So you wanna make sure that water is optimized on your property. Um, this is a good time to make sure that your rain sensors are working properly. Uh, we are getting the, some of these afternoon thunder showers that uh, typically come through here in the deep south. Um, that will often provide all the water that you need in the course of, uh, of, of a week, um, just in one afternoon. So want to make sure that our rain sensors are working properly so you're not overwatering your lawn. Overwatering, of course, can uh, uh, not only make it difficult to maintain but also cause fungus issues. Um, and uh, so we don't want to do that. Make sure if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us. We can have our maintenance teams check that out or send an irrigation tech out uh, if you have more serious problems there. Um, the other thing that we're keenly aware of this time of year is insects. And uh, if you've been with us long enough by now, you know that around this time of year, we start talking about mole crickets, uh, chinch bugs. We even uh, look into sod web worms and army worms, which come a little bit later. but. Um, this year, we're ready for anything. Uh, our crews are taught how to look for this damage and look for signs of it, of, of early damage in your property, and report that to us. And uh, we can take action on that. We will, if we see anything like that, we will come to you. You'll hear from me or you'll hear from our office, and uh, we will notify you what we're seeing and what might be the cause of it, and then how to treat for it going forward. Um, so those are things we are really looking at. This is the time of year where uh, the young mole crickets start to hatch out and start to go and feed in your lawn. If, you've, if, if you or your neighbors have a problem with mole crickets uh, and, and we haven't come to you yet about it, please make, make us aware of that. If you have any questions or um, are not sure what even a mole cricket is, uh, I would love to have a conversation with you about that. Uh, but we can address that properly on your yard. Uh, if you've had those issues before, you know that they can work quick and destroy a lawn uh, in a matter of days. So uh, we want to stay on top of that this time of year. Um, the other thing we're teaching our crews right now is uh, looking for insect damage on plants. With our high humidity here in the deep south, uh, things like viburnums, gardenias, um, uh, crepe myrtles, those are all affected by that black sooty mold that you might see this black substance on some of the, the leaves of your plants. That's, that's a fungus called sooty mold. It is often the byproduct of an insect like white flies or aphids on your plants. And, um, there's two things that need to happen to treat that. Uh, we are aware of those things. Our, our maintenance teams have the products on their trailers to be able to treat for that. And uh, we can usually get it treated within a couple of weeks after making note of it. So we're looking after that too. And then uh, this is the time of year too where perennials, things like salvias, lantana, um, any of your plants that have bloomed here in the spring have gotten through their first wave of blooms. A lot of those need to be cut back or pinched back. Um, so if you've got any patio pots, anything that you've planted uh, personally, maybe in your personal garden spaces, uh, now's a good time of year to be pinching those back, fertilizing those, and you'll get another bloom cycle out of them. Um, if we see things like lantana, salvias, uh, things like that out in the landscape, um, our guys should be taking measures to cut those back and uh, get another bloom cycle promoted for you there. Um, again, if you have any questions or specific needs, uh, you can always reach out to us uh, by email or phone and uh, you can expect to hear back soon on that. Uh, hey, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, again, as you go forward into the 4th of July weekend, um, 
just be thankful. Be thankful uh, that uh, we live in a place like we do and uh, we're fortunate to have our health and strength and um, we look forward to a great and safe 4th of July. Thanks for tuning in.